Hello, I want to present my project. It is Smart Solder Reflow Oven. So, key features would be uh, that it's running a STM processor, STM32 F4 uh, to 9. And this new processor has a 2 megabyte of uh, flash. And what's even better, it has an LTDC uh, peripheral. Basically, what it, what it does, it can uh, directly interface to um, uh, AMOLED or LCD panel that, uh, and it uses uh, RGB 565 uh, protocol for uh, transferring the, the data. So I have 16 bits of color that in, on, on this project. Uh, one of the best things about this project is of course uh, 400 by, uh, 800 by 480 AMOLED screen. It is from HTC Desire. Uh, contrast ratio is 1 to 10,000, so it's huge. I mean, if you try to buy a um, screen from eBay, I mean, e even the best one would maybe go to 800, uh, 1 to 800 or contrast ratio. Uh, cheaper would go, I mean, 200, 300, so I just, I mean, this screen is order of magnitude better than anything else. And because it's AMOLED, I mean, there is no backlight, so that's why the contrast is so high. And color reproduction also extremely good. Saturation is extremely, extremely good. And viewing angles are, of course, basically 180 degrees. So you, you, uh, you, you can't compare it with simple uh, LCD uh, NT panels. Because viewing angles can be 45 degrees, and this is, I mean... Uh, I mean, uh, can be four times better than that. So that's this is why I want to use this screen on this project because it's, it is so good. But of course, I have to reverse engineer everything myself uh, from phone because there is no data sheets. When I start, I have no data sheet. I have nothing. Uh, same as why for touch screen. Uh, so this uh, this project uses a capacitive touch screen from HTC Desire phone. And it can, it can track two fingers, and it uses uh, I2C uh, protocol to get data. And of course, one line would be for interrupts. Um, so yeah, it's, so I don't have to uh, I don't have to use a lot of pressure to get uh, to get my uh, uh, touching point uh, uh, coordinates from the screen. I mean, it's it's just great. Uh, second thing would be PWM. Uh, uh, power control. I have 15, 15 bits of resolution and I can control uh, well this I'm using very high power uh, FET. Uh, it can handle maybe 20 amps without any problems so yeah I mean my my outlet cannot give enough power uh, to blow this uh, transistor and I mean FET uh, MOSFET and I, ha I have very good driver for it so it can handle power without any problems. Uh, what else? I have PSOC 5 LP for a temperature measurement and also for uh, a pit co a temperature control. So uh, it is responsible for it. it gets a set point from STM32 and uh, and via watt. And I I will simply hold that temperature with PID controller. And it's quite it's working quite good. Of course, I have uh, two thermocouples uh, in. In opposite sides, it it can uh, it can measure temperatures to 400 degrees with 0 0.1 degrees resolution, and because it's 12 bit, uh, there is there is no need to use 16 bits uh, as I first tried. Screen in this screen, I can change uh, preheat temperature, preheat time, reflow temperature, reflow time, and board size. So well, uh, I have six box, and when I press on the box, I will simply. Uh, change my pointer uh, to where I should uh, uh, print my string to a float and a keyboard simply um, a, a write a, a number to a, a, to a string array and increment pointer so when I press the second time it will write in a new place and when I press uh, I press enter, so I simply uh, do formatting from from string to float. That's very simple. Of course, I could do at a scan uh, when I press uh, like uh, uh, preheat temperature 60 degrees. Well, I, I could uh, read 
uh, and uh, show that I have 60 degrees and then I can change that to the, key the keyboard but I found that this, uh, it, it will take much longer time to do that because I will have to pre keep pressing delete to de delete uh, my previews, uh, preview settings and apply new settings so simply I will uh, I will just simply uh, don't use that and uh, start from uh, empty string well and as you can see it's quite uh, quite responsive it's uh, I'm, I'm simply imitating uh, Android keyboard with, uh, uh, with uh, C uh, this is not Java this is everything uh, what, you, uh, what you see in the screen is right in C there is no uh, there is no additional libraries used everything is right from from gr ground up I mean I'm, I'm writing uh, to as from buffer I don't use a a anything also I don't use any uh, real-time operating system simply what I have I have a RTC timer that is that uh, will give me interrupts in about uh, 125 sec milliseconds and as example if I press button uh, I, will, I will have bezel around this uh, button and when I have next uh, next uh, if this interrupt, I will uh, clean that number. Well, th this uh, this layout is very well. This user interface is very efficient because, well, for first I have very uh, large ar array of um, uh, variables, so I will I'm tracking everything I'm playing on screen. So when I'm when I uh, want to uh, change something like boxes, uh, I don't repaint all, all screen. I only repainting that small portion of screen. So. That will uh, even clock speed of processor is very low. It's only uh, around 200 megahertz, and the screen is extremely large. is uh, 480 uh, by 800. So uh, um, it's basically near the limit of, of the processor. So so you have to keep that in mind. It's not running some kind of uh, ARM Cortex uh, i8 uh, at uh, one gigahertz. No, it's just it's very very low. A frequency process. I mean, so, someone said that well, it's it's impossible to uh, do uh, user interface on such a, a small processor with such a large screen. But I, I barely squeezed into two megabytes of SRAM uh, as frame buffer. Uh, and of course, I uh, oh okay. So let's see how it works. Let's see. I have preheat time one one hundred and forty degrees. Preheat temperature. I have um, seconds, not degrees. Preheat temperature will be 100 degrees and reflow time will be let's say 5 seconds uh, reflow time 5 seconds and peak temperature let's say 210 now bird size let's say and it's quite responsive and this is this where is two buttons reflow and settings and when I press reflow I will go to reflow screen uh, user interface is uh, uh, I write a uh, user interface myself. I don't. I'm not using any uh, real-time operating systems. I don't use Sequoias. I don't use Airtos. I don't use um, um, uh, uh, other uh, other um, operating system. Um, I want to do everything myself, and everything is done in C without any libraries. Um, I made all function myself. Uh, graphics. Uh, uh, to paint graphs, uh, to handle interrupts and uh, handle RTC interrupts and so on. Uh, this this um, this layout uses uh, two layers. Um, this screen uses two layers. One is uh, the whole screen. It's 800 by 480, and I'm using nearly uh, various because this screen is so large. I'm using a lot of SRAM. So basically, I I not have that much SRAM left. So I have uh, one buffer for full screen. Second buffer is for uh, this graph, uh, for second layer graph, and there is third uh, buffer for uh, to to set data for um, with color map uh, uh, with, uh, with the data from thermocouple. So I have a simple uh, small array, uh, 480 points, and I'm Keep adding, um, keep adding uh, data and pushing uh, and, and add uh, 
data, new data to this side and then push everything to the, this side. So it is flowing uh, to the left or right now. Oh, I can show that. When I, when I ramp it, when I ramp the, the temperature, you see that the graph will go to this side. Um, so um, uh, I use, I'm simply using pictures for uh, for layout because, well, um, I have a, a lot of uh, flash because I, this processor has 2 megabytes of flash so I can fit everything inside and simply our overlay with text uh, with, um, with temperatures measurement and time, time is calculating by RTC so as you can see the temperature is going to this direction and I'm using, uh, when I get the RTC interrupt I will I will return to my my painting uh, function. Uh, I will uh, I will shift my array uh, uh, with a new data. When I format uh, this uh, this uh, bitmap with, with, with a color map, so basically what I'm uh, doing, I'm, I have a one line bitmap, and because I know temperatures, I can apply that uh, that bit uh, bitmap color to that exact uh, uh, point. So I'm using double double while. Uh, cycle to fill this, uh, will fill SRAM with uh, colors because that's up, even with uh, 400 by 800, I mean 800 by 400 points, it is a lot of data. I mean, uh, internal SRAM cannot handle this, so I'm using external SRAM for this. And as you can see, color mapping is, it, it looks very, very, very good. So when I'm done uh, filling uh, this, uh, this uh, Creating this uh, bitmap, I use I am using a demo to the peripheral to transfer this data to uh, my uh, second layer uh, start address, and and, when, uh, and I get the data on the screen, so there is no uh, there is no tearing, there is no nothing. Also, as you can see now, I'm running PID in real time, so this is now temperature is settling for uh, soaking time or uh, preheat time. So what else? Of course, I, I was trying to do an alpha blending, like blend two, two graphs from uh, two different pharmacopoles so I can distinguish which graph is from which. And of course, I, I did that, but it doesn't look good, so I tried to overlay with, um, the grid uh, from Flash. It is also very easy to do with the to the peripheral of alpha blending, but that doesn't, go, that, that doesn't look right, so I, I simply using black, black background with a color map. And I'm scaling this graph in real time, I, in re not real time, but to my maximum temperature. So I don't. If I set temperature to 200 degrees, like maximum temperature, it will paint on. It will not paint uh, half half screen. It will paint full screen at the maximum temperature. And of course, I, I have a, a little bit margin on the top, so it will not going to uh, overflow.